This conference will now be recorded. I'd like to call to order the October 2nd, 2023 regular council meeting to order at 7 p.m. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, are any additions or corrections to the agenda? If not, would anyone like to make a motion to accept the agenda tonight? So moved. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councillor Ash. Would you call the roll, please, Stephanie? Councillor Norman? Aye. Councillor Ash? Aye. Councillor Webb? Aye. Mayor Hobart? Aye. Councillor Wagner? Aye. Great. Any presentations tonight? I do not have a mayor's report. I was going to do a a packet trivia, but I decided I want to catch you off guard. <laughs> okay. Any council or committee meeting reports tonight? Um, parks committee okay. meetings. Um, turn out that I should have brought notes about that. Remember, because I don't. Okay. Um, they are wanting some status around the stuff that the senior center is getting for the like, senior workout equipment, whatever is mm. going in the park. Oh, okay. Um, An update for that of what? Yeah. Yeah, because um. So Steve Whiteman came in with his pavilion idea. Mm -hmm. And so they're just thinking if they are gonna make any sort of proposal, they would like to like have all the pieces and tie it together instead of having piecemeal projects happening. Um, but one isn't necessarily connected to the other. Correct. Okay. Yeah. I know. We can get them the update. Okay. Um, and I can come get that from you. I just have it since then. Okay. Um, the and then they I think we're gonna be putting in a couple work orders for Hawkins. So okay. I got a couple from Jamie. Yes. Okay. Those. Um, and those are in. And then they're wanting to know about the what well, damage still on Webway is that are they still creating damage? And that's why it's not that's what I told them was probably the case, but yeah. They wanted so once they get their lines all buttoned up, then they'll have the contractor come back and fix the pavement. Okay. Um, and then they asked if the Schaumburg thing was coming back to council. I said, we had already pretty much approved it pending their approval. Yep. And, and they, they, like, they got, got the approval. He handed off. We just didn't, Dale and Claude had it nearly done for Jamboree or done. And we just didn't get it up. Okay. We need the boom truck and. And it doesn't stop time to come back for the plaque, right? You're just getting a plaque. Yeah. I'm going to try and figure out, I'm thinking something that references it on the entrance to Spencer Park instead of like a little hidden plaque that won't really be able to detail it out. Okay. So something on the Spencer plaque, like the picnic shelter and the associated sign, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I'll run, I'll, I'll proof it through them though first. Okay. And council before we order it. Um, okay. I think that that was pretty much it then. I ask for clarification. You're just wanting the update of what the plan is for in the park for senior exercise equipment, not Steve's thing, because I don't really know what's planning. <laughs> Correct. Okay. So they just wanted to know like what they're getting, if there's any kind of time frame, if there was already an idea for where it should go, because nothing came to them about it. Yeah, and it, and it was in the original building of Spencer Park was the idea of kind of a senior path and then maybe a loop and in that loop would be a couple pieces of equipment but I can get all that together. Yeah. I mean I think because they're they haven't like he came in as public comment so they didn't have time to hatch anything out but it was like the idea of a pickleball court which would be obviously very like senior focused and then um like feels like that area things are hurt now the ada access <laughs> um that area with the ada access and so they were like well if we're gonna also have senior equipment it would be good to like 
just think ahead of where that's all going to be so it makes sense in some way. Yeah, there's already a plan for that loop and that path in the original Spencer Park construction. Okay. So I'll represent all that. That's yep. a, that would be good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And, oh, sorry. Are they having a November meeting? It's falling like the week of Thanksgiving. Excellent question. I will point that out sooner than later. <laughs> okay. Just so I know when to have the update ready for them. Okay. Um, they may just want to move it up one way or the other. Yeah. Yep. And, and I might find out some inf more information on that when I attend the senior board meeting on Friday. They do have a couple elements that they're going to try and have the seniors. Uh, but at the at that site. So the grant they're using some of it, they want some in Spencer, some at the building. Exactly. But I'm talking about the all over the whole picture. The grant they're trying to get for Spencer Park yeah. the seniors also. Okay. Um oh and then they decided to have an election of um, officers. officers. Okay. So that was do we have new interesting. Are they going to update Stephanie or is the secretary going to? I don't know. Oh. They let me know. They oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, Sheree. Mm -hmm. Any other committee reports? Public works. No, no public works. Okay. Thank you, Sheree. Yep. Moving on to topics from the floor. I have two. First, Amy Salola regarding the homeless camp within the city limits. Amy, you want to come to the dais and, and just state your name for the record, and then let me remind okay. you that you have five minutes to okay. present to your council. Yep. Uh, my name is Amy Salola. I live at 1278 G Street, which is within the city limits of Vernonia. Um, I'm here tonight to inquire about city regulations regarding homeless camps within the city, or at least to make you aware of the problem. For about five years, we have had a homeless camp directly behind our home. We live on G Street, which is basically just up from the water plant on the other side of the road. Um, this is somebody's property. I don't know if I can name his name, but anyway, it's a different property owner. There's no home, there's no water, there's no electricity, there's nothing back there although there have been several people living there for many years. They have tents, they have trailers, they have boats, they have you name it, connexes, random buildings, piles of junk. Um, there are random people, you never know who's back there. Sometimes there's criminals back there. Um, sometimes there's loose pit bulls back there. Animal control has been called. Um, I've contacted the police several times over the years. I've contacted our enforcement or code enforcement officer. Um, I haven't really gotten anywhere, so I'm a little bit frustrated with the situation. Um, I was told that really the only thing that they could do was find them for using a road. So if you're familiar with Keller Street, Harvard, I mean, a lot of them are not developed. And so in our neighborhood, there are several streets, and Steve could probably answer exactly what street I'm talking about. I don't know if it matters, but I get them all mixed up because they crisscross. But this is an undeveloped road that they've been using for many years. In the summertime, it looks like there's a forest fire because every time they drive up this thing, it's a plume of dust. You don't know if it's smoke or if it's dust. Um, they run generators all night at times. Um, there has been drug paraphernalia back there spotted on more than one occasion. It's just a mess. It's literally a disgusting mess that is directly behind my house. Um, we are law-abiding citizens, we pay our taxes, which I believe that he has not paid his taxes for several years, yet he's been allowed to live like this and invite random people to live back on this property. Um, I was told that he would be fine for using that road, whether he has or hasn't, I have no idea, but whether he has or hasn't, it hasn't stopped them from using it over the years. Um, it's just super frustrating. Um, they're not camping. So to not be confused with people that are camping, they are not camping. They live there all the time and different people rotate in and out. You see random people going up our street, going down our street, going up State Street, going down State Street, and that's where they're going. I'm not comfortable with them back there. I walked back there yesterday. I usually don't go back there. That used to be where my kids played growing up, right? This is just empty property. 
somebody else's property, but they would go play in the woods back there. And I won't even walk back there because it is so disgusting to me that this is happening feet beyond our property line. I'm just asking that something be done about this or that somebody can finally give me an explanation that makes sense because I have not gotten one in all the years that I've been down here complaining. So now I'm here complaining because I'm just super fed up with it. I think it is absolutely asking that we have allowed this for this amount of time. So they're using the bathroom back there, contrary to what anybody says that they went up there and looked and didn't see any signage. Well, let me tell you, they live there. There's no outhouse, there's no hole, there's no, I mean, I don't know what they're doing, but they're contaminating the soil. If I want to go sell my house in the next couple of years, guess what? That's going to be a problem for our family because they take one look at what's directly behind us and that's what they're going to see. So I don't know. I had a hard time on the website, to be perfectly honest. I tried finding stuff. I found some information regarding um, uh, living in trailers. I really couldn't find anything that was specific to homeless camps or camping. Maybe it's there. I just couldn't find it. Um, my knowledge, they shouldn't be living like that. So that's all I have to say. I would just, I understand that there's nothing that probably anybody's going to say to me tonight regarding this, but I sure would appreciate some kind of correspondence in the future regarding this matter. Okay. Because I just, I'm tired of coming down here and complaining, you know, and saying, hey, this is happening again, or this is going on. I mean, I worry about a forest fire every single summer because they're back there, they burn in the summertime, they run their generator, they're smoking mess back there. I mean, like, it's not good. It's not good stuff that's happening back there. And like, we're surrounded by trees. So it's just a constant concern. And also just who's back there, you never know. Like my kids are older now, but when they were younger, it was a concern leaving them home because God knows who's behind your house. I mean, they've come over, you know, some of the people have come over before for different reasons. And it's like, go away. I don't want them there. If they want to live there, then they should live there properly like everybody else does. Okay. So that's it. Thank you, Amy. And my second one is Steve Weller, homeless situation off of East Avenue and Ice Street. Steve Weller, 1264 G Street, Maroney resident, been here a long time, 65 years almost. And I'll just follow up, hadn't planned to speak, but when I found out Amy was here, what she was here for, I'll, I'll echo that. This has been, I live right next to Amy. This is in behind their property line. It comes up off of East Avenue, which is a platted street, which isn't developed. Many, many years ago, the property owner that is in question up there, Mr. Robert Wagner, he put in a, there was a road established, a cat road, way back before my wife and I ever bought our property to build our home on 25 years ago. So it's been there and he'd actually put a drainage ditch and such in there. I too am frustrated because um, we have been here many times. I've been, I think I even, if you look back in the records, I've been to council meetings in reference to this. And the situation is such, I was told by your code enforcement, Eva, that they're camping and there's nothing that can be done about it. Well, I'll echo um, Amy's comments that that's beyond camping. They live there permanently. The mayor, Mr. Hobart, has been there. Um, previous council member, I don't know if Josette's ever been up there and actually seen the situation, but it's been an ongoing and continuing problem for a number of years. Um, it's interesting that you consistently get told that there's nothing that can be done when we know that they're in direct violation of some of the ordinances. And one of the ordinances, I won't state the ordinance number because I don't know it, but back in the initial onset when Mr. Hobart was up there with me, we looked at it, the ordinance read that a Connex box, which if you're not familiar with what that is, it's a container box that they ship things overseas and what have you, was not legal to be on a city property and be used. Initially, it was brought in, dumped on East Avenue, then it was eventually by Mr. Wagner yarded up to the property, and then he was told that if he could get it out of the site of the paved approved, improved street, then it would be acceptable. So that's what's been done. I've been told, too, that there's been fines um, levied in regards to the use of the road because it's not improved and shouldn't be used. 
whether the city's collected any of those findings, any of that's been collected, I have no idea. In reference to the, that cactus, my wife and I were approached by Mr. Wagner in August, I believe it was, somewhere around middle of August, if we were interested in buying any more of his property. We'd already purchased two of his lots. Immediately we said, yes, we'd be interested, asked for what kind of a price he would have, and so on and so forth, and we negotiated with him. And um, we ended up purchasing two more lots of his property, where at that present time he had all this junk. And I'll just say it, it's junk. You, some people might think it's not, but let me tell you, it's junk. And so they started the process of moving the material to the adjacent piece of his property, which is further up against a steep part of the hill. They managed to get all that done with some of my assistance to help them. And we got some of their junk hauled off and got rid of it. But there's more there now. <laughs> it's just been added to. So I, too, agree. I know that there's been illegal activity that goes on in there. In fact, when we were actually in the process, there was, I don't know who it was, but there was another young male there that was definitely smoking crank. I mean, there was no doubt in my mind. The, the pipes are on the stumps and everything else over there. So as a safety issue in reference to the city, it's time something gets done. And we've seen what's gone on in the larger metropolitan areas. It's disgusting. There's no reason the city government can't levy a situation where something can happen. I'm doing my best to mitigate the problem by buying as much of his land as he'll sell me. And I know Frank and Amy would like to have a couple more lots that are in behind them. And he's being pushed into a corner to where he basically has nothing left. He's got a little tiny bit of property. The man basically has little or nothing to his name. We paid his back taxes for him so that he was off the hooks because they were ready to come and get it. They were ready to foreclose the county was. So I think patience is at a point where it's done, and I think it's time something needs to be done. And I agree that we've been to the law enforcement. I know they've been there. I'm aware of that, I'm aware that they've cited Mr. Wagner, but it's time the mess gets cleaned up. Because as Amy said, should I want to sell my property, and there's times when I get to the point in this community I'm about ready to, that it's going to affect my property values. Um, because I'm, I'm, who wants to buy and live next to somebody that's in a, a bum situation? Go to the homeless camps on the streets in Portland. Nobody wants to live next to that. I mean, you look at what's going on in the news media. Businesses are pulling out right and left down there because of the crime problems that it creates. We've just been, we've been fortunate, at least from my place, I can speak on my behalf. To the best of my knowledge, we've had nothing stolen, nothing taken away. We've never had them do anything bad or to our property. But the potential is greatly there, especially as Amy said, the number of people that come and go from that place, you can't help but know that there's probably criminal activity with drugs and whatever else. So on behalf of my family, my home, I would like to see something done. And it's to the point where it's in your hands as a city government to make your enforcement people go out there and make it happen. Um, so, any questions for me? Oh. Because, like Amy said, it's been a good five years that this has been going on and nothing's ever been done. So, we would appreciate some action, not just lip service action. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Well, we, we can't give you any answers right now as to what, I, I, I can probably promise you that we've recorded all your concerns and written them down and, and in the near future, I hope you can approach us and we can have a discussion about those, so. Is yeah. that your phone? Oh, okay. Be in business for yourself. You get to learn it all the time. <laughs> okay. Cassette agenda for acceptance. Moving on to cassette agenda for approval. City Council meeting minutes for September 18th, 2023. Any questions or discussions? 
I move to approve the consent agenda for approval. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. I'm seconded by Councilor Webb. Would you call roll, please, Deputy? Councilor Wagner? Aye. Councilor Ash? Aye. Mayor Hobart? Aye. Councilor Norman? Aye. Councilor Webb? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Any unfinished business tonight? No. Moving right into new business, staff report, council training approval. So what you have before you is brought by me as your guys at your guys' request. I requested I know um, a proposal from a facilitator for council training. Um, I explained to her what was requested of me um, and that you guys wanted training on kind of higher level council operations. Um, running meetings, working together, staff, and I also told her some sort of team building, something that would help us communicate and operate more fluidly. Um, and then I didn't, I told her it wasn't necessarily a, oftentimes you're setting priorities and we were already doing that. So what this is going to do is, the, my understanding is the training of how councils and staff and city administrators versus managers all should function, what your guys' roles are, what our roles are, the team building exercises, and then kind of bringing it together of how to use that over the next two years to um, accomplish our project priorities. So, that's what we have before you. So I had a question. Um, if we do go with this form of training, are they presenting it four four Saturdays? Is is that what it? No, it'd be one. Just Saturday. a one shot deal. Yeah, one one six to eight hour Saturday. Yeah. Um. I see where there's going to be interviews for staff and counselors. Yeah. And so. There'd be some work before. They'll interview us. Oh. Like what's working and not working for each of you yeah. so that they bring something to the table that addresses all of your individual. Yeah. What you see as a need, what you see as successes, what you're hoping to get from this training, what you're hoping the whole group gets it from it. And then they kind of tailor what that actual day is going to look like based off of all those interviews. Um, I'm I'm going to ask the question to the council. We haven't really talked about it until we've been presented with this. But my question is, would we get the same results if we came in on a workshop Saturday? and went over our council rules that we're approving tonight in our city charter and had a uh, informal deliver a couple pizzas for lunch, sit down for the whole day, talk about how we operate for free, maybe a, to pay for a couple pizzas rather than paying $6,700 for a one day training session, can we get the same results? Because I think a lot, majority of our constituents would think that that $6,700 would be better spent in other areas. That, I'm just presenting the question to the council. I'll let somebody else speak first. Well, I don't know if anyone else okay, wants to Then I'll to speak. go for it. So <clears throat> there is a lot of learning that needs to be um, accomplished with this council, with any council, not just specifically us, but specifically our council. There are processes that have not been followed. There are things that we have not done. 
there are things that we have done inappropriately. And one of the reasons this training came up was because we were putting ourselves and our, our city council at risk by doing some of these actions. And until we understand the value of training, and if we want to do it through League of Oregon Cities and they have a free training that we are all going to actually attend, that might, and I don't know that they're free, they may be less expensive. They've never been free in the past, but they have been less expensive than this. But is everybody going to attend? And um, are we, is it going to have the same effect of helping each of us understand individually our roles here at the city and how to engage with our support staff and our city administrator. It is not just about what our council rules are and aren't. And I absolutely believe we should be doing what you've suggested as well. But having a facilitator and having someone who has experienced a training and maybe not exactly what, um, I mean, this, this is a guideline. And as Stephanie said, it's gonna be a lot about finding out from each of us what we expect to get out of it. Um, it's not Susan's idea or the mayor's idea or Dale's idea of what needs to be accomplished. It's a compilation of all those things, but understanding our jobs, which I don't think we all do. Um. Stephanie, do you remember, I, I think in my first year I attended, well, there was most of our council attended the LOC over at McMinnville that one day and you yeah, the us over. Yeah, the elected essentials. Yeah, that was a very good session. Um, what did it cost the city for us to do that? I don't remember. I think that might have been included in our fee. Okay. Certain ones that they promote and do and you can go to, like you travel to them, I think they host those specific ones to the fee, for the fee you pay. Oregon cities, that's a city. Yeah. You can get access to their already scheduled classes. And then I think, I believe my second year, we had training with John Morgan. Mm -hmm. And do you remember what, I think it seemed to me it was, $2,000 or something like that. Oh, it was definitely more than that. I thought it was like five. four. Was it that five. much? It was yeah, it was, it was four or five. Was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most of these facilitators that come in and train boards and councils and school boards, they're pretty similarly uh, across the board, fee-wise. Um, I know when I attended I attended a couple of them also through League of Oregon Cities and Forest Grove and other places. Um, and they were, I, they did charge because there are, I mean, there's lunch and there's no, the sure building lunch. and all that. Um, and I believe it was about $100 per person. Yeah. Some of them are hosted and yeah. stuff. you can pay for the entry member fee. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Are we allowed to speak at all? Mm -hmm. um, not at this time. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so one of the things is council in Vernonia has been very anti-training for the last 20 years. And it's really something, maybe this isn't what you guys choose, but we should get in a regular pattern, partly because we have new members who are coming on kind of blind, right? Or or we filled in positions, so that, or they didn't run, they got appointed, so they weren't kind of in the scheme of it. So some sort of refresher um, should really be in our planning on a regular basis, just so everyone's kept abreast of the kind of job and the requirements and what's expected and all that. Um, the other thing is, is while I get the, the constituents version of it, this is earmarked in training. It's not like we're pulling it from somewhere else. So there is a training budget and that's for staff pays for Stephanie to go to city recorders conference. It can pay for council training. 
pays for different things other than police. They have their own training budget, but the rest of us, should any staff members or council, that training budget's earmarked every year for that exact expenditure, just so you know. We're not pulling it from some other um, plan. It is planned for this, you know, that's one of the places it comes out of. This is being proposed out of professional services. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments? I'm, I'm not opposed. I I like learning. I always think everyone has infinite need to learn, but um, I mean, the price does seem high, but I have nothing to compare it to. And I don't know the value of it because I haven't done it before. So I guess <coughs> I don't have any strong opinion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know the one with John Morgan. Yeah, I, I know myself and a few of the other counselors on that one. We didn't really feel that the value was all that good coming out of it. Um, but like Sharif says, I'm always willing to learn. The thing that I see, though, is we're talking about these interactions, how we interact with each other, mm -hmm. counselors and staff. To me, it seems like it'd be worth our time to enshrine these learnings. So we're not paying, we, you know, we shouldn't have to be paying these professionals time after time every time there's a new council up here. We should be able to document some examples of how we how to interact and not to interact if there's a packet to a new counselor when they come in and go you know we know you're new or maybe you're not but this is what we've gleaned over the years the best practices so they at least have some basis to go from the the training of for people maybe trying to get along. I think there's just societal differences in people. I don't know that this will bridge that. I don't I think that's a tough I think I so not to interrupt not, challenge, huh? not to interrupt you. I'm pulling a bruise, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> um I think part of the reason routine training is because those people are gonna constantly change. Potentially these people are gonna constantly change and be different people. So where an example you put in that worked for you guys and me, or you guys and Stephanie, if one of us is not here or you guys aren't here, then that example doesn't um, replicate as good or is maybe someone's totally learning style or, or how they perceive what you're encoding or decoding what each other says. It's about learning who each other are and how when I talk to Dale and I talk to Rick, the differences in those, how you guys take what I'm saying, right? right. Um, so that's something, and maybe it doesn't need to be a full on training, but that kind of refresher of, here's all the players, how do we interact with each other? How does one person, because in like societal differences, one person can be totally offended by something or think I'm upset because of the tone of my voice, where that's just my tone and really it's the words I'm saying that are how I feel about it. Um, so people are gonna have societal differences, but if they can learn to engage with someone where they're at and how they take and give information, I think that's very valuable. We, Scott and I both participated and I think Susan, in Ford family and part of that is that learning each other who is that person how do they see the world how do they get from point a to point b in a project some people see, know the project and they see the end and some people break the project into a million pieces so i need to know who are the players up there and are you a guy that i can say we're going to do a sewer project and you just want to know what it's going to look like in the end and susan may want to know all, every step in between so that's the kind of learning about each other that I think is valuable in trainings, whether or not you pick this proposal. I think that's very valuable because it helps me to then relay what each of you need in my 
information and not just go to what one person needs that's similar to me. Does that make sense? So that's one of the values I see in training, but it doesn't have, I'm not like, right. you guys do what you're going to do, but. But I think probably one of the most valuable things for in a new packet for a new counselor is get your behind down here and interact with staff yeah. and talk to your city administrator. And, and, and that's the learning process. I think that you get, you get that back and forth and know, Right. Know more about each other and, and how each one kind of what they takes want. it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I, I agree. Yeah, it's probably the trainers come in can come in here and we can all find out what our personalities are and and you can do all that fancy stuff. Um, but to me, it seems like it's a continual. For these people, I mean, and maybe that maybe that's the right way to do it. When how long was it since we've had John Morgan? That was the previous council, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Within four years ago or so. It's been a good three, four years. It was before 2020. Yeah, it was before COVID. It was 2019. 18 or 19, yeah. Yeah. So it's been a few years. Four years. Yeah. <laughs> or so. Yeah. Um, you know, that one there, the John Morgan one, I don't know, really helped a lot because he didn't really do what I see these people are probably going to do. Mm -hmm. That one mainly was a city administrator. What's that from him? I remind you that she was also one of the proposals. Yeah. And she's the one that staff recommended. And we took the cheaper one. <laughs> and the different gender, I think, is what was the makeup of the decision a little bit. Pretty sure. Not for me. Okay. <laughs> I think you were the only one who voted against it, actually. <laughs> I don't remember, though. That's good job, Dale. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't think... I don't think it, like an onboarding packet and us getting a training aren't mutually exclusive, um, obviously. And just because you had a bad experience in the past doesn't mean a different service is also gonna be. I mean, I understand, but I, yeah. Well, I personally <laughs> have an opinion that every new counselor or mayor that comes in I wouldn't say it's mandatory, but I, it would behoove the council in the city if they could attend their first year an LLC training session. That was very beneficial for me. Um, I got more out of that than John Morgan training personally. Yeah. And and I think it's really important. And, and I can't emphasize the fact that you got to read and study your council rules and we're all different but we have a we have a on the wall outside there's a mission, city mission statement and i take that very seriously and um, i read it from time to time when i walk in the door and we have a city charter and council rules and those are so we could operate and serve the city to the T in that mission statement. So I would I would be in favor of attending an LLC training session, our group, and and uh, rather than doing this, that's just my vote. So I would like to ask you then. How does that help this group moderate working with our city administrator and city recorder? Josette, all the time, five years I've been here, her door has always been open to me. I feel I can go in and talk to her about anything. And really, my job is to run the meetings and 
hopefully make sure and choose the agenda for the following. You know, I, I, I've been doing that for now four years, meeting with Josette a week prior to the packet coming out, setting the agenda. Anybody that wants to put anything on the agenda, come talk to me and we'll get it on there. Um, part of the council rules, as far as us being effective as a body, if you have an issue with myself, say for example, I hope you can feel like you can come to me and, and talk to me about it rather than you know, rather than not. And so the more we communicate and feel like we could talk about anything without it being in a serial meeting, that's the way we should operate. And um, I make mistakes from time to time. I think I'm getting pretty good at running these meetings now. And, but sometimes I make mistakes and um, no, I'm not perfect either, but I, 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 I think we can get the same result at, out of some LOC training. It's a, there, in fact, some of these people in this, I think, are LOC members. <coughs> Mrs. Wilson sounds familiar. I shouldn't I don't think so. It doesn't work for a city anymore. Okay. But anyway, that's about all I have to say on it. So I have a question on her staff. Um, because you're saying this consulting firm is highly recommended. So do you guys have a rare question for a non factual bias opinion? Do you have preference you don't have to tell me why which you would like to see us attend if you this or loc mm -hmm. you want to go i think an individual training would be a lot more valuable i don't think that we would get anything out of just getting together and having pizza sorry and talking about it because we won't be honest with each other and people will get hurt feelings so we'll have no moderator no mom or dad there um, League of Oregon Cities trainings, I've been to them with you guys. They're really generalized. It's, I mean, you're going to hear things from the city of Forest Grove's mayor that have nothing to do with us <coughs> and are not how we operate. <coughs> Japan, we do not. Um, for a good example, I think either not having one at all and just saying, we're fine, we'll figure it out, continue on, or hiring a facilitator who will come here and train us individually and help us function better as a unit and to stay in our roles both ways um, would be a lot more valuable. I'm saying she's highly recommended because she is the only, or SSW Consulting, is the only firm that any other city recommended to me. Any of them. There's a mid Willamette Council of Governments who does a training. They don't service our area. No one recommended them. And they are on my listserv, every single one. And I was honest with them and told them some of our problems and what we were kind of looking for. And they said, there will be no problem. She can handle it. She's been a city employee. <laughs> She's been a facilitator. She has experience with it. She gets it. But again, I don't really, I like these trainings. Um, I think if you guys don't move forward with it, I'll be really hesitant to reach out again for a third time to get an upper pole <laughs> from her in the future when somebody asks me for it. Because like, hey, she'll be like, are you ever going to hire us? Can you write me another proposal? Yeah. Um, but I won't lose sleep tonight. If you yeah. decide not to do it, I care, but I don't care. I have no choice. So, <laughs> well, I would hope if I think of myself, right, as an employee and colleague elsewhere, that if I went to a colleague or supervisor and suggested to them that they need 
training or development right in their team working or leadership skills that they would be open to that suggestion. So I think that hearing from staff that they would support and desire us to do that is enough reason for me. Got me the answer. Very good. If you'd like. Well, I just, I, I think the LOC ones do give us the basics right. of what elected officials have to do in the state by their elected mandate. Um, I think just having been in Ford family, the connections I have and the way I understand the people that were in my cohort, I'm still friends with all of them in this town today and understand when they come at me hot, I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I know what personality type they are. I know what's going to really send them further and fuel the fire. And I know what's going to douse the flames because I know who, where they're coming from. And I think as council, that's hard with staff. I mean, we're on the production end, right? We're producing things for you guys and we're showing you what has been produced. And so not understanding people as clearly is, presents difficulties at times because you'll say something and someone won't respond at all and you're like okay then <laughs> you know you're kind of like where do i go now as an employee so i would be for it but it's like stephanie i won't lose sleep if it's your guys's decision so also norman do you have anything to add it is a hefty price is very concerning that it could be used elsewhere but i don't mind learning yeah i don't either but. take the price mr mayor if we prorate it out for the years that we're here it drops it considerably per <laughs> if you divide it per person per year yeah I don't think you can speak, Steve. <laughs> Go ahead. I would just encourage you, having sat on a former elected official board myself for about eight years, that training is very valuable. Yeah. I understand what you're saying in big Oregon cities. Um, to take it a step further it might be very beneficial. And a little bit of money that it seems like a lot in some respects, but a little bit of money you might spend there may save you tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars if you get yourself in a bind and you end up getting that court of law and, and yeah. know that those training can help you project and go further okay any other discussion thanks to okay all right i'll make a motion then Go ahead, Dale. I'll make a motion that uh, authorized city administrator contract with SSW Consulting. For training. <laughs> so, <laughs> is there a second? I'll second. Councilor Norman seconded. Will you call roll, please, Stephanie? Councilor Webb? Aye. Councilor Ash? Aye. Councilor Hobart? Um, aye. Councilor Wagner? Aye. Councilor Ormond? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. You guys want to send me your availability or do you want me to just mark it down today? Did you guys come um. prepared? Dates. Okay. Start with November. November's in Sunday's in November. <coughs> Is anybody busy the fourth? So we're looking at a Saturday, right? So I don't have her availability, but I want to get dates that absolutely do not work <coughs> for you guys so that I can bring it to her and say they're available on the <laughs> So not the 25th, obviously. Not the 25th. <laughs> I am not available the 11th. 
And I think someone said the 18th, they weren't. 18th, I wasn't gonna be here. <laughs> uh, dare I ask about the 4th? I'm not the 4th. Okay. December 2nd. Uh, probably not, okay. if I'm packing a bowl out of the woods that day. December 9th. I can't do the 9th. 16th. That should be good. Okay, 23rd. That's Christmas. Not too close to Christmas. Uh, 30th is New Year's. <laughs> January 6th. All's well. I'm good there. January 13th. Am I going too fast? No, that's the Martin Luther King Junior Day is on Monday, and I don't know how many people are going to be taking a longer oh. weekend. <clears throat> it's are a three-day. Have plans as a potential worst-case Ontario? Preferably not. Preferably not now. <laughs> Prefer no. The twentieth. Okay, for May. Twenty-seventh. The guys are getting open next year, eh? <laughs> the third you too. of February. Yep, garden. Seventeenth. <clears throat> Again, that's a three day weekend for oh, President's okay. Day. And the twenty fourth. Not a chance. Not a chance. Pardon? Is it your birthday? No, oh. um, heading to Florida. Oh, oh darn. Sorry. Okay, so I think I've got plenty of dates to work with. I will reach out to her and I'll let you know as soon as I hear back. <laughs> I'll need to back uh, December 2nd. There's a chance I wouldn't be available. Okay, I asked that one out. Okay. Thanks, Donald. That's my birthday, and I don't want to spend the, my birthday with everybody. <laughs> I'm, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I went to the dentist on my birthday last. Hey, you cancel that appointment next time, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't all day. <laughs> okay, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. And thank you for coming prepared. Business from the departments. Okay. Ordinances and resolutions. Resolution number 2023-12. Adopting new council rules. Okay, so what you have before you is a resolution updating your council rules after extensive work sessions and interactions with our city attorney. The changes to your council rules are exactly what I brought last time. The only one that changed would be exhibit C, C um, letter E was mistakenly left that should have been removed. I gave you guys an updated version, but that's the change. Oh, that's it. And then, um, I didn't set it up there for you. You need a new one. Oh, sorry. I think I get some of them got it. So, well, actually, in your packet, you'll see what was removed. So, you're welcome. Um, so, E was taken out uh, per Councillor Mrs. Webb, and actually, Wagner brought it up to me also. Um, that was supposed to be removed, and we added uh, in D, it'll say an employee or citizen complaint. Mm -hmm. And actually, in reviewing it with Josette just shortly before this meeting, there's one more change we would like to have you do. Um, in D, the second sentence says the mayor shall notify the city administrator of executive session in conformance with blah, blah, blah. I usually do that because I ask her if she wants it in open or closed session. So with your guys' thing, we'll put, um, instead of the mayor, it'll say the city reporter. And that's okay. because I send her an email. I have to respond to it. She has to respond to me. I have it all documented. It's per the ORS, actually. I'm okay with it. Okay. Um, you have an objection? I so there are I apologize for not having read this as thoroughly as I should have before the last meeting. Okay. There are some inconsistencies and 
duplications in here and unnecessary things. So there is nothing, I, the only thing in here, there, one thing is that um, it talks about being placed on leave pending investigation. Which one? Um, Which letter E. Okay. The, kind of in the middle. Council may also decide whether the sitting administrator shall be placed on leave pending investigation. Does not say paid or unpaid. That needs to be detailed. I, it needs to be called out. Being placed for, on. We're laying out the process for you guys. Okay. Well, because Mike, I have the kind of the same concern. It just says that. So sh should it help you guys in like, like if you're doing this, then this, right. if you're doing this, then this. Because there, there's re reference here, says here that say in this policy, this is how you do it, but it doesn't really detail some of the things. And um, so I, I'm, st I'm not comfortable with approving this particular thing right now. Um, it also does not address um, one of the things we talked about, which was if there's a personal relationship or knowledge or involvement of a city council member, that they should be declaring that clearly and whether or not they have to recuse themselves. I understand that that's all part of a process of whether or not you have actual or perceived um, conflict of interest or whatever. But I, I think that needs to be in here because we talked about it and I, I felt it was kind of important. Yeah, I don't see that either. Stephanie, did, did our attorney draft this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That was put. I thought it was in. So B, the mayor, that, so that was addressed. It just says that the mayor by, designates somebody else, but. <clears throat> no, the council designates who it's going to be. The mayor or other member of the council may be designated by the council to be responsible for receipt of complaints against the city administrator. If the council has not design, designated, I don't know why I'm struggling on that. Okay. Point, a specific council member for receipt, receipt, the mayor shall be, oh yeah. But we're not really Let's talking just about, it. we're not talking about receiving it. Let's just receive no, it. Yeah, right, we're right, talking no. about yeah. kind of overseeing the process of. Right. Um, so I'm wondering, did Ruben reference your guys' complaint? Because the handbook really lays out how I follow, a com if I get a complaint about an employee and it's on the formal letterhead signed, they're attesting to it, what I'm supposed to do, I think you're looking for some of that to be interjected in this, where it says, if you're doing this, then blah, 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 blah. If you're going to do this, blah, 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 blah. I would think like that. I would be much more comfortable because having them add in this either needs to be very more specific like that, or just you need to follow the process. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's, I, there's some other things that just need to be taken out because it, it's like an E it says, if there is a meeting of the council, the council shall review the complaint. Well, the paragraph before states that there will be a meeting. Yeah. You, you were removing. But no. It's on this new E. Oh, the new, new one. Key. Sorry. That's what they're saying. So. New E. Yeah, new E. New e. It says if, if there is a count meeting of the council, but there is a meeting of the council because it states so the previous paragraph. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, so there's, I, I understand, I think you got this just quickly because it needed to be fast. And so it could get in, but I just, there's, a, there's a couple of other things that just okay. need to be wordsmithed. And it's not just cause I, not just because it's my style to do something. There's just some things in here that need to be <coughs> in my opinion. And I am just one person. Well, now I wish I had taken notes the last meeting because if that got left out, what if other things got left out? Did you take notes? 
at the last minute. Yeah, but I don't bring them. Right, but maybe we should look over and make sure there wasn't anything else that we asked where it's not in here. If you look at the meeting minutes, it has a bullet list. Yeah, it has oh, a bullet list. Oh, wait, imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, job. Wait, there we approve. Yeah. I forgot about that part. And that whole block is exactly what I sent to him. <coughs> Amy and Steve, if you, you don't need to. <laughs> this is boring. No, no, the entire time. don't feel like you have to stay for the whole meeting. No. <laughs> she has to sit through city through school board meetings all the time. So this is probably more entertaining. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, so I think the part where the individual bias was addressed was in E. <laughs> the council will determine whether the complaint should be investigated, designate a council member to be responsible for handling the complaint and determine who should conduct the investigation. So that's that's where you guys would say, as a group, we believe that you have a bias. I would prefer if you, what? Nothing. Go ahead. Well, oh, I, 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 have to I don't want to keep going. No, no keep going. You have to go I'll wait for a minute. I mean, it's incumbent as a counselor if you have a bias or a conflict that you declare it. I mean, that's it's in your rules. <laughs> I mean, well, bias isn't illegal. Conflict of interest is. Yeah. It's up to you guys as a body saying my preference is. But you guys can always request them to. It says on it. in B that we were amending that all complaints are sent to the city attorney for review and legal mm -hmm. opinion, and I don't see that in B. That is, yeah. Yeah. It, um, yeah. It, it's C, the last sentence in C. Oh, okay. All complaints shall be. So it was put in the C. So yeah. B. Okay. I was only looking at Yeah, everything that. moved around a little, or not every a couple things did. Yeah, so I just think item three was, it says that handling complaints designates the member responsible for handling complaints on a case-by-case -case basis. And I don't think that that is achieved. So can I, can I propose something? Why is this not in the city administrator ordinance and out of the council rules? Because it's the same with, with your guys's or your review process is in here. It's in their rules for how to operate. Okay. So it's policy versus. Because I'm wondering, like, the way the employee handbook has the employee, like, it seems like maybe the discipline and how that goes down, discipline, correction, investigation, whatever. I'm wondering if it should be in that in the res resolution or ordinance for city administrator, like how you hire and fire and how you discipline that person. Right. And, and you're, I don't know. You're probably right. It should be in there. So yeah, and then the it's administrator. Then the you meeting. could have it reference that ordinance and then that could change on its own. Should something go awry and you want to tweak it, you don't have to go back and undo your rules where it's, I don't know. Resolutions are easier to change because they're policies. Yeah. And ordinances are much more difficult to change. Is it an ordinance or a resolution? What? City administrator. You're in an ordinance because oh. it's establishing you oh, okay. as a So maybe that's not the right. Office. It's yeah. not, it's different. Yeah. It's I get what you're saying. It's a resolution. Yeah. It's policy, not law. Well, what if it went in the handbook? As a res It could. It for just, all employees of the city, including this employee. It's like, how the CBA is separate. Yeah, they that's true. I get it. Something different than we do, also. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's up mm. to you guys, but no, I'm just trying to. I I don't disagree with the idea that the rules are how we do our business up here, and how we conduct ourselves in our daily work. And I'm not saying that place against city administrator wouldn't be that mm -hmm. or the council evaluation but 
wouldn't it make more sense to pull council evaluation and the complaint process into separate? This is basically codifying it. I understand. It all together. <laughs> but I'm trying to see if we can't, uh, we couldn't approve them because we're trying to change them yeah. by anyway. Yeah. We're not allowed to do. So it's going to have to be continued anyway, right? Do you mm -hmm. want to have a work session, session with Ruben? Yes, please. I would like to. These are all where it would be long instead of the back and forth because I just take exactly what you guys say and give it to him and then I take it and I give it to you and if you guys want to change it more it seems like maybe it'd be good to have him. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> and we could maybe talk to him about what would constitute placing an administrator on leave or not you know what's the criteria. Yeah. And you guys I mean I have some in the back of my mind but I don't know if that's appropriate right right but. then you guys can talk to him more and ask why it's this way or why we should do it the other way and he can explain it all to yeah you. and we want to get this right yeah 100 percent. so it's not my process yeah yeah <laughs> are you guys in favor of that sure okay but i will Reach out to Ruben, see what his availability is, and we'll get it scheduled. And maybe you could do do it the hour before a meeting. A meeting. Yeah. If you guys can make it an hour before, then you're not trying yeah, to get a questions lined up and ready to go. Yeah. And maybe we get you guys his updated version, clarifying or cleaning up this draft even further or something. And that's what we used to do. And if you're only going for one thing. Yeah, it's surprising how effective Quick it can be. Let, yeah. Let's try to document the changes that we want to see go into it and and, and notify them first before the meeting. Yeah, I'll take okay. all this and I'll give it to him. Okay. okay. These are the things that they're kind of looking to see put into the rules the policy. Right. And they want to talk to you about why things are. Well, and clarification of what happens when kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So you need a motion for someone to table it, right? Um, <coughs> yeah. The other motion, but I guess we can just. Do that. <laughs> yeah, we can do it again. Let me get to the right spot on my table. It too. Do we want to wait for Councilor Wagner to return, <clears throat> or? I don't think it's necessary. She said that she was in favor of it. It won't be a vote, but yeah. So you just want a general consensus from? So if you could make a motion to table the decision for resolution number 2023-12. Okay. Until a time when we can have a work <laughs> session with the city attorney so we can Good. discuss the process, period. I will move to table resolution number 2023-12 until such time that we can meet with the city attorney and back. So moved, is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Councilor Webb. Would you call the roll please, Stephanie? Councilor Norman. Aye. Mayor Hobart. Aye. Councilor Ash. Aye. Councilor Webb. Aye. Councilor Wagner is absent. Motion carried. Okay. Want to place a vote? So we're table, tabling to a future date until we can have a work session with the city attorney to redraft. Awesome. Would like to vote? Yes. If you want to vote, so yes. Councilor Wagner. Yes. I yes. <laughs> <laughs> should carry. Okay, resolution number 2023-13, amending the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget. To be found on page 28-30. Okay, this isn't really mine, but as I drafted the resolution, I'll go ahead and present it. Uh, during the audit process, it was discovered that some numbers were and amounts were either entered incorrectly or entirely excluded. And so there is an updated document in front of you um, to adopt amending the budget. It is not a supplemental 
these numbers were already in the budget that was presented to you, but they weren't on the page that was brought to you, nothing's changing. Just the sheet. So. Auditors are very thorough. Yeah. I don't know. It's which is great. Dollar. Which is great. That's why we have them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Very good. <coughs> Any questions or discussion? We need to vote. A motion. Yeah. Okay. I will move to approve resolution 2023-09, um, adopting. Dash 13. 13. Dash 13. Amending 2023-0. Just kidding. <laughs> I will move to. There you go. Adopt resolution 2023-13, amending resolution 2023-9, and adopting an amended fiscal year budget for 2023-2024. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Councilor Wagner. Would you call the roll again, please, Stephanie? Councilor Webb. Aye. Mayor Hobart. Aye. Councilor Ash. Aye. Councilor Normand. Aye. Councilor Wagner. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Correspondent, City County dinner and invite. Next week, I believe, on the 10th of October in Rainier. I am planning on attending. I've already RSVP'd. I will be attending. I cannot attend. Two. So I will RSVP to you guys, and then Rick, if you would bring me in some money. I will. And then Donald, and we will make sure that they're both included on the check. Wonderful. Yep. And that's at 5.30. <laughs> and that is over in the city of Rainier, 106 West B Street. I'm going to have to Google that. I haven't been over there, I don't believe. So it'll be a new experience for me. I think it's actually at the address at the top, 48. Oh. Yeah, that's the city address. Oh, okay. It's at the senior center. Senior center, good. <coughs> oh, that Thank is you for that Yeah, direction. I don't want to send you to City Hall. <laughs> that is confusing. It is. For how many people are going to go to the road? <coughs> Hopefully, <coughs> put a sign that says we're at the senior center, this address. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Letter of support request from Michael Calhoun. So Michael uh, is working with Seb Stewart and the county to get the CZ Trail on the <coughs> National Recreational Trail. <laughs> Sorry, the Banks Renoni Linear Trail, CZ Trail already has that certification. So attached is the letter. Um, if you guys are in agreement, then we will print it and have the mayor sign it as your letter of support. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. We'll need another motion. I will move that we um, Sign the letter of support from the city of Vernonia for the Banks Vernonia Trail to be certified as a national recreational trail. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Councillor Webb. I have a question. Sure. Would it be beneficial if all the councillors also signed it so it wasn't just from the mayor, that it was actually from the mayor and council? <laughs> I mean, it's just, I don't know. just a courtesy thing. I mean, it's, I, I have not to dismiss your role as mayor, but if, you know, absolutely there's times when the mayor should only, you know, only the mayor should be signing things. But I, I was just wondering, because this is, we're all excited about it. <laughs> and it's just a question. Well, it says it's from the city of Renonia. So it's not just from council, but. That's true. <laughs> it was just a question. I'm ready. I'm happy to vote on it if you want. I won't lose sleep over it. Okay. 
Uh, Oops, did I get a second on it? Oh. Yeah, Ash and okay. Deb. Yep. Would you call me? Councillor Ash. Aye. Councillor Wagner. Mm -hmm. Councillor Normand. Aye. Set you up for that. Councillor Webb. Aye. Mayor Hover. Definitely an aye. Motion carried. <laughs> I thought you were going to say no for a minute there. Sound like the whole lot. <laughs> no, I, I was a part of the. Um, CZ Trail, right? Well, I wasn't a part of it, but uh, I was in a way when I was interviewed by Channel 6 and talked about the CZ Trail being recognized in, on the federal level and on national trails. I think that's awesome. And it is really quite a, quite a deal for our community here because to have the, not only the CZ Trail, but the Banks Linear Trail recognized on a Federal level is huge, and Anonia sits right in the middle of it, and so we we get a, we benefit from it greatly, like Michael said. So it's a really good thing. Okay, city administrator report. Okay, so um, still anticipating the DQ is going to test the well up at Mary Ann Odom's um, this month. Uh, we have not heard anything on the SCA, but that's not surprising. <laughs> still no update, still no response from the Storm Ready City people. Um, staff did have the FEMA community assistance visit on Wednesday the 27th. We're doing a great job managing the floodplain. There were a few specific requests for regarding record keeping processes that we're working on to comply with their regulations. Um, we are keeping all the floodplain development permits. They want a copy of every one in a binder just for them. And they also want a copy of every elevation cert in the floodplain that we get in a binder just for them. Okay. Um, we will be getting the document that outlines what else they want from our visit um, within a month. They told us they'd have it to us within a month. So, and then we'll get those dealt with and get this community assistance visit closed out. Um, the ODFW Review Committee has recommended that our dock replacement project get funded in this cycle. Um, the commission will hold a meeting December 15th to give the final approval um, of the list of recommended projects. And once final approval is given, we can order the dock replacement platforms and the walk-on dock. The goal would have them built and installed in late spring of 2024. Um, public Works interview. So Sheila Parrott from the Public Works Committee, Jeff Birch and I interviewed an applicant for a utility worker position. This applicant had turned in their application when we posted it the first time. Um, and so an offer of employment was given to Wayne Curry and he starts his three month probationary period today. So he's on the job. Uh, staff walked dot <coughs> in a project meeting for all of the ramps that are slated to be put in the downtown core along Highway 47 um, ADA ramps in the downtown. It's slated for next year. Really, it's probably more like 2025. That's how their timeline's running. Um, we walked the project. We discussed our issues. They don't really care about our issues. Um, which, okay. Um, and then we'll meet again via Zoom to see their final project details. Um, yeah, they don't care. They just are gonna put in what they put in. And if we rip it out three years after that to like one of them was the alignment of weed. Um, so we're doing right now with the sewer project, we're acquiring some of that right of way Batemans are giving us the right of way that is their old railroad grade, which comes in front of the Wana parking lot. We're having that designated as its own little square in the hopes that we can just hand it to Wana, but that would realign the right of way of weed. They're going off the, the sidewalk and having it come straight across where it's not really gonna be in the right of way. So we discussed that with them and asked them not to put one in right where people because people still use that approach out of Wana that's not on weed. It's their old driveway approach. Um, so 
we'll see what they come back with. We pushed really hard back on that. We also pushed really hard back on uh, the ramp they want to do across the street where the old, the only place I know it, it's the most easterly side of Grant. Um, it's there where the old payphone used to be, if anyone's lived here long enough. Um, they're going to bring one straight across from there um, or towards Myers ramp. And I'm like, this building's 100 years old and he brings cars out that those doors and what are you what are you doing? Um, they don't they are just following the lawsuit and they're going to put whatever in. And I'm like, OK. Um, and I asked had you if they had talked to him and they said we don't need to because it's in the ODOTS right of way. So I'm sure, yeah. whatever, <laughs> they, you know, okay. Um, they also are going to be increasing, we have to move the city hall sign. They are, they're increasing the width of that to get a flat platform. They don't like the rise of how the sidewalk comes up. It's so ridiculous, but we're under their jurisdiction. So we'll see the final details in the Zoom meeting. Um, we have, as I stated to you guys before, we've been fixing all the park door, restroom doors, um, and we're ordering new ones for Hawkins after Salmon Festival this weekend. It'll be closed for the winter, um, and so that'll give Mitch time to kind of redo the bathroom fixes on the inside and then replace the doors with new working doors, um, and they'll have, uh, like, security panels where people try to pry open where they can see the mechanism they try to pry those open and then they yank on the door and the doors are metal but the foam core inside the door breaks and then the top of the door doesn't sit flush so then the magnets don't work so we're fixing all those um the electrician's still working on a lot of things for us most importantly they're separating the police server they were doing a whole bunch of low voltage pulling of line um, because for state law the police server has to be separate it cannot be a combined server with the city just because of the records it holds so they're doing that project right now and that's in the budget already we talked to you guys about that um so yeah that's all i have unless you guys have specific questions for me um, speaking of lights and electrical lights out, I noticed this morning there's there's at least three or four of our street lights out. Um, what time in the morning? Like was it seven? Because if they're still on. Well, oh, if this they're a photo cell, yeah. so if the light okay. doesn't hit them until a certain point, they won't go off till the sun hits them at okay. a certain point. That's what was yeah. happening this morning. <clears throat> some were on, most of them were on. and some were on. <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, I'll come early enough in where there's still a couple that are hidden by buildings that are still on and everything else is off. Closer, closer to the city hall. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's just the photo, so I'll not, the sun hasn't hit it yet. Yeah. Ahead. Um, I should have mentioned when I was down talking to you today, um, Hawkins Park, the new trees, are we going to get them fenced? Yeah, so Mr. Beaver is going to come along there. I know they're going to be stubs. Yeah, we will get them using the same kind of stuff you use, but just a bigger version. Yeah. Okay. Anything else for the city administrator? Okay. Thank you, Jill. That items from the counselors, mayor. I won't be, well, I may be remote for our next meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And I would like to actually, um, city administrator, compliment them on getting uh, any kind of a CVG grant in, having suffered through it. In the it was a joint year. effort. Yeah. It was, it's a mess. The system is a mess. Good job. <laughs> Fingers yeah. crossed. It's open. Congratulations on the docs. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. That'll be really fun to look forward to next year, having brand new docks and, a, and then a walk brand new walk-in 
dock 20, at least 20 feet out from the boat ramp. So yeah, that'd be really nice. So, okay, any other items from Dale? Um, we have a couple of concerned citizens here tonight. I think that bears council at least being informed as to what the city's done or staff's done and, and where we're at. Um, if we, you know, where we can go with this, I don't, I mean, it's a little touchy because my cousin, so it's a little bit of a conflict of interest on my part, but I don't, you know, I don't know this, this whole homeless thing. I think we're going to have to have more discussions besides just that issue up there. So, um. So yeah, just looking for other counselors where you want to go if we need to have a workshop on this or or just get a feedback from our staff. Yeah. What's been tried, what's the laws, what are we at? Sure. Do you guys want an update at your next meeting of sure. all that? Okay. That'd be great. So we're going to get a report the next meeting, and then we'll decide if we want to do a work. Yeah, and just tell you what's been what's been done, how and what our and legal see the code, and what you'd have to do potentially to not allow or and what the current law is because there we will have to be enacting a law because currently there's a right to rest in the state of Oregon, and so there's no nothing that stops any of anybody currently from camping right out on the grass in the front of city hall. So you have to put in, you have to put an ordinance in place um, specific to public facilities, and then you have to designate where you will allow them to rest because you can't just keep pushing people that's not allowed here. So I can bring you all that information and then potentially we should in the, over the winter work on that ordinance to set aside where we do not want someone stopping to rest and where we are going to designate a spot where we will be okay with it and what the process of that is. So there's just a lot of things that go into it. But I can bring the update of that specific situation and situations like it in the city and how we see the code and legal sees the code, what's allowed, not allowed, what's happened, everything. Okay. Get it on the agenda for May 18th. Yep. Anything else, Don? I was in Yam Hill today, whether we put these in or not, I thought the speed limit sign was very nice to a person. Bottom it says thank you when you go the speed limit. Oh, oh not nice. it also is not so nice when you're speeding. Oh really? Yeah. It tells you to slow down. <laughs> not so nice. Big red, no thank you. Big red. <laughs> yeah. It says no thank you. Say no thank you. If we put any of those up, I would like to see one like this. I say to point you know, encourage people because I thought it was very nice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Oh, and I like the blue color too of the numbers. Yeah. Um, we were talking about CZ Trail. C. Scott got it out online, but this week they'll be paving from the whole yeah. trailhead up the yeah. hill there to alleviate some of that hazardous biking downhill biking they got in yeah. there. Um, so, and that'll be a real opportunity for our citizens. I know I've even talked to Angie. Um, she likes to go hiking and stuff, and I said, well, you know, you should look at that one because it. she wanted something a little more challenging, and I said, well, that was not challenge you because I've been up and down it, and I know I'm huffing and puffing halfway up the hill, <laughs> and uh, so anyhow, I, I think it's going to be, once they get that trailhead all put in, and, and with that being paved, um, it, it's going to be a real asset yeah. for the town here and for the local hikers and, and then the bikers. So. Thank you, Dale. Anybody else? Well, thank you for your participation. We're now ready for a action item summary. Okay, so um, I'm gonna update 
the parks committee at their November meeting should they have one on the senior park planning. Um, <clears throat> staff is going to print the letter of support for the Banks for Nonia Linear Trail and have the mayor sign it. Um, staff is not going to forget to fence the Hawkins Park trees before winter. Make sure the guys are getting on that. And staff will be bringing an update to the next meeting on what's happened and why for the G Street issue. And I'll also be scheduling a work session at some point in the future. <laughs> for this? Oh, for training. The training. Yeah. Oh, no. I'll shoot deal with that too. So we'll have the training and then uh, uh, council rules. Council rules. Oh. Yeah. Now, do you need additional corrections? from like Councilor Wagner? Yeah. There are ones that you guys didn't voice? You wanted the changes? Well, but uh, that's just my personal observations. I think that until everyone has a voice in it, I don't think that I should be giving. Yeah, and he'll be, he, he'll be online, so he'll be able to take. Right. Yeah. I think that'll be adequate enough at the meeting. Yeah. We won't be adopting it then. Yeah. It'll just be the okay. discussion. Right. Yeah, but I don't think if we had some changes beforehand that we would. Well, no, she has what you've said tonight. Is there right. anything you didn't? Councilor Wagner has. Yeah, some more. there's a couple others. You get those to step. That's in. what I asked. Yeah. I I see what you're saying. Now. Okay, but I think other people have additional comments yeah. that they haven't even considered, like Councilor Ash. But the closer it can be to. <coughs> Working document, the better. We're it's just happening. trying to get you them prepared ahead of time. I am happy. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you all for being your participation tonight. I'll, uh, and Steve, thank you for your input. And I'll adjourn the meeting at 8 35 p.m. Meeting adjourned. <clears throat> I get to go take a walk. <laughs>